Welcome to Mix CG Arts. In this video, we'll dive into the Bevel tool in Blender, covering its fundamentals, tips, tricks, common problems, and how to solve them. Let's get started. To begin, first select the object you want to bevel. Then enter edit mode by either clicking the drop down menu and selecting edit mode, or simply pressing the tab key on your keyboard. Now we're in the edit menu. Now scroll down with the mouse wheel on the left side tool menu. Let's extend this tool menu by click dragging the mouse. Now scroll down. You can find the bevel tool in the menu. Now let's select the edge, select mode to bevel the edge. Now select any edge you want. Click and pull this yellow gizmo here. You can see that the edge is now beveled. Let's open this pop-up menu here where you can find all the properties and settings of the bevel tool. This allows you to customize the bevel according to your needs and the mesh you're working with. Um, you can use the width option to change how much bevel you want on the edge. Uh, the segments option decides how many edge loops are added along the bevel's face. It affects how smooth or detailed the beveled edge looks. Let's add a bevel one more time, but this time let's use the shortcut key control B. Drag the mouse to bevel it and then scroll the mouse wheel to add more segments. You can increase or decrease the segments by rotating the mouse wheel back and forth. After that, click to confirm. The shape option controls the curve of the bevel from curving inward, concave to outward, convex. A value of zero makes the curve inside while one makes it outside. Um, and it's not just for beveling edges, it can also bevel vertices. But if it isn't working, you can fix it by selecting the vertices option in the pop-up menu. For the vertices option, everything else works just like with edges. You can adjust the width, segments, and shape. And the shortcut key is Control shift b to bevel vertices. And similarly, you can also bevel faces. Now it's time to talk about the bevel modifier. Let's add the bevel modifier in the modifiers properties panel. For this purpose, let's press the add modifier button and then click on bevel in the search mode. Here in the modifiers panel, we have the same properties and settings as we've seen in the bevel pop-up menu. Let's discuss each one by one. So the first option in our list is material index. The material index decides which material slot is utilized for the bevel. Here I've applied four materials to this cube and the bevel modifier is also applied to it. In the shading drop-down tab of the bevel modifier panel, you'll find the material index option. By default, it's set to Nagas 1, which means it uses the material of the nearest original face, typically the first material in the list, often named material. Now, when you increase the material index value from Nagas 1 to 0, you might not notice, notice any change. That's because the first material, which is white, is already being used for the nearest face with the Magnus 1 value. So even though you set the index to zero, it's still referring to the same white material. As we increase the material index value to one, you'll notice the color change from white to green on the beveled edges. This occurs because the value of one corresponds to the second material, which is green. As we increase the material index value, you'll notice the color changing from green to red, and then from red to blue. This demonstrates how the material index can be used to switch between different materials. And the best part, you can animate the material on beveled edges. Let's talk about hardening normals next. When hardened normals is on, uh, the bevel faces blend smoothly with surrounding ones without affecting their flatness. This needs custom split normals on the mesh, which will be enabled automatically if needed. As you can see, it maintains smoothness on the bevel edges and flattens the cube's side faces. Uh, here's another example demonstrating hardened normals. Next up is clamp overlap. Clamp overlap limits the width of each beveled edge to prevent overlapping intersections with other geometry. Uh, just like in this example, when we enable clamp overlap, it limits the amount of overlapping between beveled edges. No matter how much we increase the amount value of the bevel edges. Next, we have mark seam and mark sharp. Uh, this option ensures that when you bevel edges that include both seam and non-seam edges, the seams continue as expected. 
Uh, as you can see, we've marked some seam edges that intersect non-seamed edges on both spheres and applied the bevel modifier to both. Let's enable the seam option on one sphere and leave it off on the other sphere. Then apply the modifier to both spheres to see the difference. Let's go into edit mode to see what happened on both spheres. Uh, you can see that on the sphere where we enabled the seam option, new edges were automatically marked as seams created by the beveled edges. However, on the other sphere where we didn't enable the seam option, it didn't mark any seams. Uh, for mark sharp, it's similar to marking seams, but instead of creating seams, it marks edges as sharp. Next up are the miter outer and miter inner options. A miter happens when two beveled edges meet at a corner. If the angle at the corner is more than 180 degrees, it's called an outer miter. This option decides how Blender handles outer miters. This option fixes geometry or artifacts created by beveling. For example, in this case, we're using the patch miter outer option to correct the geometry issue on the beveled edge. Uh, here's another example using the arc miter outer option to fix our geometry issue. Miter inner has the arc as its second option. With this choice, two vertices are placed near the intersection and a curved arc connects them. Next up are the intersection type and face strength options. Intersection type refers to how Blender fills in the space where multiple beveled edges meet at a vertex. It controls the method Blender uses to create this mesh. We've got two options under intersection type, grid fill and cutoff. Grid fill is the default, but let's focus on cutoff. When you select it, it simply creates a clean cutoff face at the end of each beveled edge where they meet at a vertex. The set face option adjusts the strength of faces affected by the bevel depending on the selected mode. You can utilize this alongside a weight normals modifier, ensuring the face influence option is enabled. In this scene, we've applied both the bevel modifier and the weight normals modifier to a complex mesh, making sure to enable the face influence option. Take a look at how we utilize the face strength options to correct the shading on this intricate hard surface mesh. Profile type determines the shape of the bevel profile. Profile type creates a bevel with a consistent concave or convex curve. In the profile type, the custom option lets you create a customized profile with more complexity than the single profile parameter. The presets option in the custom profile menu provides useful presets, helping you save time. Uh, one of the most commonly used presets is steps, which creates a stair-like bevel shape, saving you time. The last option in modifiers is limit method. The default limit method option is angle. It bevels edges with an angle less than 180 degrees from adjacent adjacent face normals, preserving sharp edges without affecting smooth surfaces. Let's discuss the weight method. In edit mode, you can apply bevel weight from 0 to 1 to control the intensity of the bevel effect. And when you apply the bevel modifier to the object and set the limit method to weight, it will only bevel the edges where you've applied the bevel weight. And the best part is that you can adjust the bevel weight to control how much bevel you want on specific edges. To use the vertex group method, you need to go to the object data properties panel and add a vertex group in the vertex groups tab. At this stage, you can select edges or faces to assign to the vertex group. Now, when you add the assigned group to the vertex group in the bevel modifier panel, you'll see that it only affects the edges or faces you assigned to that vertex group. In the end, we're going to explore the bevel shader node. The bevel shader node only works in the cycles render engine. In the shader window, add the bevel shader node and connect it to the normal input of the principal BSDF. Now you'll see that the corners are shaded rounder, but remember this only works in the Cycles render engine, not in Eevee.